protection. And uh, well to the floor on this uh, was uh, kicked by Reels. And United Health Care in the centre as well. Well to the floor. Clean Illuminate are uh, in control as well. It's a technical finish. We've got uh, a right-hander followed by two left-handers in quick succession. And our riders down, almost inevitable, onto the cobble section. And uh, well to the floor on this uh, was uh, kicked by Reels. And oh, so many are going off. And just staying upright, an amazing achievement in these uh, treacherous conditions. And more riders going down at the final corner. It's uh, clear and to the line between these two riders on the right-hand side. A trip to Jesso Downing. And on the left, Edward Avila from Team Illumina to the right hand side of the road they still need to go further to the Aaron needs to move over towards the right and keep that keep control of that right hand edge of the road so that no one else comes up there and he just moved over well, well look at this Hansen's back on the front again he's down to one rider Aaron Gate has done what he could uh, it's a good effort from Aaron Gate but what about Lassie Norman Hansen he is a motorbike goes to the front but Sport Flanderen now on this one on the front they've got two riders then in line of stern behind them Team Rompot this is why it's going to be difficult for Adam Blight if he wants to contest this spin, sprint properly so he's to find the right wheel now and get dragged into into position but we've just gone under the kites we've got about 500 meters to go here inside the final kilometer well inside the last half kilometer indeed as they go to launch off the front Ackerman goes for uh, for Bora Hanscrew he's got Rüdiger selling I think in his wheel but it's uh, a si significant daylight and coming up to try and ambush this one from behind Veron Classic Equality Protect Team Rompot going for the line and they're all in ones and twos trying to get in position it's been a hard day out trying to get organized inside the last 150 meters Adam Blythe has got himself into position but here comes uh, Wanty Grip Gobert Wanty Grip Gobert Gobert surely has this one. And Team Joker, Team Joker, I think, are going to get the big championship and no stopping Halverson in the finale here. Beautifully timed effort coming from third wheel. Halverson sits, he's getting himself onto a very, very good wheel there, just following the, the Borough House car. Just moves himself around the outside of that one. Adam Bly got himself massively boxed in as well, but Halverson waits, waits, and then goes around, takes the guess a good slipstream here, and just still doesn't panic. And here comes Adam Blyde. Yeah, and Blyde coming from further back than he might yeah. have liked. Rüdiger Selig backed off and uh, tried to leave it up to uh, Ackerman for Bora Hansgro. And that looked like it had cost uh, Halverson, but he's just so strong. He was able to get back into position beautifully timed, as you say. Oh, he, had a, he had a perfect way through with getting a slipstream all the way up until the last sort of 75 metres. And uh, that's when he really stepped on it and uh, held off. A very strong charging Adam Blyde, who's coming from a long, 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 long way back. Um, I think Aqua Blue may need to just redial the timing a bit of when they actually start getting onto the front for Adam. He's certainly in a form enough to win this. Monte Group Gobert getting up uh, for third on the line, and Blyde finds himself with another runner up position. The, of the 108th Milano Sound Emo, 18 seconds, I feel it's a little less as we come up towards the finish. This can still end in tears. At the moment, it is favourite odds on. Peter Sagan, but he's in the worst possible position at the front here. Alaphilippe warms up. They come on to the Aroma in just a moment's time, and Sagan, well, it surely is his, unless there's a mistake. Unless there's a mistake. Well, they round that corner successfully. Peter Sagan, Rob, is going to have to lead himself out to try and win his second monument. Can he do it? Well, he's going to have to ride the other two off his wheel. Remember, no World Championship winner here since Beppe Saroni in 1983. 500 metres to go. This this is the spot last year, exactly where Sagan was caught up in the crash. It didn't happen then for Gaviria. It did happen for Denar. They're all chasing on behind to bring it back together, but it's not going to happen. 350 metres now to go. As Kwiatkowski looks around, Alaphilippe's going to have to launch his sprint soon. 200 to go. It's Sagan on the front. He was victorious in Kuna Brussel Kuhn. He's putting up the gap, but closing on him is Kwiatkowski. Oh, surely he can't do it, can he? Kwiatkowski's coming round. Sagan's going to be beaten. It's Kwiatkowski. Kwiatkowski, who's going to do it? Michal Kwiatkowski wins Milano Sanremo for... A lot of it, PR-wise at least, of their own doing. 
The riders can do nothing about that, but Kwiatkowski here away, he gets on the wheel of Sagan. Sagan here looks like he has it won, but look at him come around on the wheel. He gets closer, closer, and it is heartbreak inside the final 10 metres for Peter Sagan. It's Kwiatkowski, Sagan, and Philippe at Milan San Remo. Well, that was a, just an absolutely thrilling finale. Fair play. Look at that, the sportsmanship of Peter Sagan. Well, he's a proper racer, and when I when I compared him there to Madison Foss on the descent, it's in all all aspects really. He's an entertainer. He's a superstar. The sport is certainly better off for having Peter Sagan. But today he was the first to acknowledge straight away that he'd been beaten quite brilliantly. He had no other choice. There's no way Kwiatkowski. There's no way Ala Philippe were going to lead Peter Sagan out. Peter Sagan had to do it the hard way. He lit this race up. He made this race, but Kwiatkowski was equal to it. He rode with strength, he rode with belief. He nearly was dropped by Sagan, but look at the face of Michal Kwiatkowski. He still believes, comes off the slipstream. At this point, Peter Sagan is tying up. His tiring is all over his bike. Last lunge, and he takes it. That's one of the most thrilling... Uh, Sunweb are also here with Phil Bauhaus, who I believe has uh, uh, missed out on all of the action today, the, the negative stuff, the crashes, of which we've had plenty. They sailed by these uh, poplar trees, not yet in leaf, but somebody is going to be uh, cock a hoop in a few moments' time. Here's your dip, here's your pickup, and Varian's Classic Aqua at the moment are bossing it, but Bawani's still in the frame here. Here we go. Now, when and where is he? Where is he as we look? But uh, Bohani is out of shape at the moment in P4. Now he's got to come round. Bohani has got to make it count right now. He's been released. He's going to take the shortest route home. Is it going to be hyper predictable? Here comes uh, Bohani. Can anyone get back at him? Oh, the prize fighter has taken one here, surely. Time and indeed distance for anyone to stop him running out. And he gets it. Bohani delivers. Outstanding climb there. 还有台北市政府前的市民广场也被抱怨，因为这边平常是车道，到了周末才变成了广场举办大型活动。不过呢，也就因为是这个规划成广场使用，所以这段路呢是采用砍石设计，凹凹凸凸的落差比较大。汽机车经过的时候就会上下左右的跳动，对于身障的轮椅族来说，更是通行非常的困难，民众很多的抱怨。因此，有议员今天也实际坐着轮椅来测试，觉得对于身障者来说，在这段路上走真的是活受罪。过了台北市议会柏油路，就变成一大片六百多平砍石路面的市民广场。汽机车走在上头，感觉很不同。就就一直跳动啊，比较颠啊。我也希望他改成柏油，柏油比较稳啊。他自己骑在这边会特别小心，骑慢一点。砍石路面凹凸不平，落差大，行驶汽机车上下跳动，左右摇晃，增加危险。而对于穿高跟鞋的女性以及轮椅族，也是很不方便。议员拿轮椅实际测试，这个这个坐起来哪会舒服？坐起来会倒推哦。啊，这个这个推起来好辛苦啊。推的人、坐的人都不舒服，要是轮椅族自己推，那更难。他这个，你看还会空转，还会空转，你看他这个，因为压了。坎坎坷坷啊，那自己一个人一定很累的啦。这还只是正常人的测试，对于脊髓损伤或是身障人士，铁定活受罪。然而，坎石路面十七年前就已经启用，当年是要区隔出广场范围，采用跳动路面，让汽机车减速。早期我们的使用上对于无障碍的部分的考量可能比较缺乏一点，这个部分我们必须去考量，说一个经费的使用跟目前的用途的。主要用途是什么？再来评估是不是要更改这个路面的一个材质。是否坦诚确实通行不易，只是要取消或者是更改，都还得评估。毕竟道路没有坏，更新会惹来浪费不环保。然而不更新，折磨的则是用路人。明天新闻，陈建平、李志瑞，台北报道。